in the last four years, we have seen so many small cases, PMSs, and mutual funds give more than forty to sixty percent returns. But are you aware that there are certain quant fund managers who have given a forty to sixty percent return in the last twenty to thirty years? And in today's video, we are going to talk about these guys. Today, we are going to talk about two of the most famous quant fund managers who have solved the market. One is Renaissance Technology, and second is Citadel. What sets these guys apart from rest of the investors, and what are the challenges that these guys have faced? in their journey to become such successful quant fund managers and what can be our takeaways as investors from their journey but before we start please don't forget to like subscribe and comment on this video please let us know if you like today's topic and what other topic you would like us now the first question is what are quant funds let's cover that quickly quantitative funds or quant funds are essentially investment funds that use advanced mathematical techniques and tools and statistical models and think of algorithmic trades and techniques to identify trading opportunities and execute these trades they rely heavily on quantitative analysis to make investment decisions which are typically data driven and remove any human subjectivity judgment emotional components from the entire investing process they obviously consume a lot of huge amounts of data to exploit any market inefficiencies and trends that they identify you might be thinking what does a typical quant team look like it's typically a bunch of mathematicians statisticians computer scientists getting together and trying to understand the investing flow they're not your traditional traders in that sense jim simons is a world renowned mathematician who left his academic job at the age of 40 to start a quant hedge fund he was a mathematician before this with an immense interest in the markets and at the age of 40 he started a quant hedge fund that went on to become one of the most successful investment management firms in jim simons is now one of the most successful hedge fund managers in the world and one of the richest people on the planet the crown jewel of the fund is the medallion fund the medallion fund right now only runs for employees it has outperformed the market consistently for the last 30 years the medallion fund has in fact given a 66.1 pre cost returns since 1988 and after cost the fund's return are 39.1 obviously the management fee seems hefty but if you look at it from the perspective of an investor you had invested 1000 rupees in the renaissance medallion fund in 1988 today the value of your investment would be million on your screen you will see the year on year performance of the renaissance medal <clears throat> of the renaissance medallion um, of the renaissance medallion the chart you would see that the fund almost touches a 100% returns on most of the recent years and year, and in uh, <clears throat> and in the most volatile years like 2008 and 2010 in the market the fund has given a return of more than 100% on the capital now let's look at the size of the fund the fund touches 10 billion dollars in terms of size and the profit seems to be close to the size of the fund in most years so this fund is generating more than 7 billion dollars worth of profit from investing or you know trading into the stock market using quant strategies on a consistent basis if you look at these numbers these numbers look absurd let's try to understand what jim simon is doing to create such a successful investing vehicle sa technology is a quant hedge fund that uses complex data driven methods to take its trading decisions they have huge data pipelines and a massive amount of data it is said that the amount of data in the sa technology's warehouse is in petabytes peta is million gigabyte worth of data what is unique about renaissance technology is that they don't just look at traditional financial data they collect data from a wide range of data sources which can influence financial or economic phenomena and they analyze thousands of gigabytes of data on a daily basis renaissance technology has been doing big data analytics on financial data for 20 odd years whereas a lot of other firms have in fact started exploring this only recently these guys use mathematical models to trade and these mathematical models are designed to sift through this large set of data to find any patterns that can help them make a profit the team that nasa has consists of obviously these financial geniuses but these guys are coming from ibm from all these big tech firms and the technologies that they use are very similar to 
the machine learning techniques that are used in language processing, image processing, and other pattern recognition techniques. Tesla has successfully leveraged the excellent scientists and the huge data warehouse and these data pipelines create this profitable hedge fund. So what sets Renaissance apart? The first thing is that they have 30 years of experience of working on big data and analytics. For 30 years, they've been building these data pipelines. Initially, they started only with commodities and then they diversified away to stocks and complex derivatives. Obviously, so many other companies have also figured out how to create these complex data pipelines. Like a Google or an open AI can also do that. But this, the thing that the NASA does requires a lot of financial expertise, which probably is not the priority for these tech firms. The second thing that works for NASA is that it has a massive first mover advantage. NASA started building these data pipelines and these pattern recognition models in the financial market years ago. Investing is a multifaceted domain. Building data pipelines is only one part of it. And NASA has specialized in different domains of the investing world. Third thing that works for NASA is that it has a culture of academia. Jim Simons was a mathematician, a mathematics teacher before he started this Quant Hedge Fund. And all of the early as well as older employees have come from the academic background and they have maintained this culture of acad academia where they research and have this intellectual zeal of discovery into the market. Another thing that definitely works for NASA is Jim Simons, who is without a doubt a genius. Jim Simons is a once in a generation force which ha who has combined academic genius as well as managerial success. It takes a genius to rally these amazing academic folks and create this excellent money printing machine. And the last strategy that works for NASA is their excellent employee benefit program. As you all know, the medallion fund, their best performing fund is only open to employees and they really reward uh, the employees with these amazing profits. The second quant fund we'll talk about today is Citadel. Back in 2018, Ken Griffin Citadel was looking at hiring a bunch of scientists and meteorologists who were very, very renowned and knew about the weather space in general. They were more accurate than most weather offices as well. Uh, and this is quite odd for a large hedge fund to do um, that was looking at sort of looking at, you know, quantitative data and how uh, to make trades in equities, bonds, currencies, etc. Uh, but Ken Griffin, the CEO of uh, Citadel, went about the, his business and they, at that time, I think they had about 54 billion in assets um, in, and they were trying to build out their commodities business, uh, both on the futures and the physical trading side. Uh, and they were looking at focusing on the gas and power sector. Now, uh, obviously, naturally, as we know, the, the Ukraine and Russia war happened, um, along with a lot of volatility in oil prices over that period, COVID also happened. Um, so. In hindsight, it looks like the bet paid off. Um, and what actually happened was in 2022, Citadel made 16 billion in profits for its clients, uh, post fees obviously, uh, and it moved towards becoming the largest and the most successful hedge fund of all time, displacing Bridgewater Technologies. Uh, they did all of this at a time when other hedge funds had scaled down their commodities play and were looking at maybe holding, you know, low to zero um, single digit um, sort of assets in their commodity uh, business. So we know that Citadel made a lot of money from the gas and energy play and it really paid off for them. But what exactly did they do and how did they actually go about doing it? So uh, when we look at the gas and energy sector, typically on the supply side, it is pretty predictable. You can map it out. There's a lot of data that's available in terms of the prices that are being traded, not just in the US, but globally as well. Uh, and there can be a large team of researchers that are uh, getting a lot of inputs and a lot of fundamental data from oil, gas tanks, um, what is the delivery routes, supply chain, etc. Uh, the demand side is where things get a little tricky. Um, because forecasting demand on oil and gas consumption can be um, very volatile. It can depend on seasonal patterns. It can depend on consumption patterns. There's a lot of things that go into it. Um, and obviously the weather plays a massive role in influencing the usage. Um, and because if you think about it, you know, in hot summer months, usage will increase, which means more oil and gas energy resources would be required. Um, because there's more usage of ACs and coolers and fans, etc. So the demand side can be a little tricky. So what Citadel did was uh, it had its traders who were being fed information 
about the weather conditions, how the weather was sort of changing, what are the forecasts that, that the team is looking at. And they had a very strong weather team that we discussed earlier uh, from 2018. Uh, and they used all of that data that these weather uh, folks were getting uh, into these large supercomputers to run forecasting models and include specialists in areas such as, let's say, thunderstorm, um, tropical cyclone predictions, um, how the sort of ocean currents may have an impact on weather conditions, and a lot of sort of very nitty gritty meteorological uh, forecasting was going on in the background. And in addition to that, what they were also looking at was sub seasonal forecasts. So you could think about predicting. Uh, the weather forecast for tomorrow or one two days later but what they were doing at at scale was trying to predict how weather patterns could change in the next one month two months uh, ahead as well which is very difficult if you think about it um, short term is naturally difficult but going to that level of um, distance in the future and trying to be able to predict it if you're able to do it accurately it becomes highly lucrative naturally citizens gains from gas and other commodities played a big part in its record 38.2 percent performance last year which brought its annualized return since launch in 1990 to about 19.7 percent so just under 20 percent uh, annual returns for nearly 20 30 years now right uh, so what has led to their success let's sort of quickly look at that um, there would be about three points that i would like to mention here the first is there's a technological innovation and a very strong focus on data so it'll invest heavily in this space they're utilizing very advanced algorithms, AI models, statistical tools at their disposal and supercomputers to analyze market data. Um, for instance, in the gas example that we were sort of speaking about earlier, that play that they did, um, they had fundamental checking points such as levels of gas storage, uh, how much uh, oil pump or uh, oil um, drill is sort of uh, pumping out. And they would sort of make decisions based on uh, what oil exporting nations uh, could be favorable, you know, where the needs are not being met, where the demand could result in a price increase. So those type of opportunity trades were being sort of looked at. Before Russia invaded Ukraine in, in February, Citadel's commodities team had already weighed the implications of a delay to the Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline that's very critical for the European region. Um, and, and this kind of work that they are doing can very quickly be repurposed for different conflicts. So it's a very replicable model for them. Um, and ultimately, the granular level of data that they're able to track on the commodities supply, um, the demand side of things, really helped shape the firm's um, thinking on what a war could have uh, on the sort of global markets, the oil markets, the gas and energy markets. And this ultimately proved very instrumental for them to sort of shape um, not just oil and gas and energy markets, but also to sort of understand how inflation um, you know, in Europe, UK, US could be impacted and how that could have a broader impact beyond just gas, energy and oil markets. Um, there could be a lot of other um, elements that could be impacted here as well. Um, the second point here is they have highly talented employees, very similar to sort of Simmons Renaissance. Um, nearly about 20% odd of um, Citadel's employees have invested um, in the fund itself. Uh, out of the 28 billion that they've earned, um, 12 billion was paid in fees to Citadel ultimately. And without these fees, they wouldn't be able to attract the strong talent that is needed to keep a lot of these very complicated and extremely uh, complex systems in play. The third point here is when markets are volatile, they do look at risk management. Um, supposedly from let's say January to December 2022, while the S&P lost about one fifth of its value, Citadel's equity fund climbed up about 21%. And 2022, if you remember, was a very rough year for global equity markets. Uh, so what do we take out of this, right? Citadel's equity portfolio managers made no big calls in that year. There were no big short, big bets that were being made. They were not looking for killer trades. They were not looking at predicting or timing the market. There were no top-down wagers on the likelihood of a Fed pivot or value-beating growth. Their fundamental job in that year was to neutralize all market-wide risks the firm wished to avoid and ultimately let individual bets play on their own merits and how the sort of evolving scenario was changing. Um, their risk factor models were always under continuous review and they would compare what the model is showing um, 
and how that is driving risk with the empirical data after it has happened as well. Uh, and finally, in, in Cyril's terms, I think the firm really thinks about risk and managing it as what can they do before that event occurs and not what they can do after the event occurs. So it's a very proactive approach for them. Both Renaissa and Citadel have a number of common factors. Both of them rely heavily on advanced technology and data analysis using sophisticated algorithms and models for trading decision making. Their unique company cultures prioritize intellectual rigor and innovation, attracting top tier talent from diverse fields. Firms continuously adapt and evolve their strategies to stay ahead in the dynamic financial market. Effective risk management techniques are the core part of their strategy, allowing them to navigate market volatility effectively. Obviously, there are a number of challenges these quant funds also face. Number one is maintaining that competitive advantage. How do you maintain your competitive advantage in the market when you know, everybody is sort of working to get that profit? Effective. Second is systemic risk. These guys have large operation, large scale of risk that is there on their books. And especially during turbulent times, these funds with these complex systems could contribute to market. These guys have heavy technology dependency. They are exposed to risk systems like system failures, cyber attacks, and technology obsolescence. Staying ahead technologically requires continuous and substantial investment. There's a risk of copycat strategies. As their strategies get known, a number of people are start copying him to start eating at their profit, you know, to get a piece of the pie. These funds also face ethical and social considerations. Sometimes the impact they're causing on the market is questioned ethically. For example, let's think of Citadel's world's oil when the rest of the world is moving towards green energy. Well, the investing strategy of Jim Simons and Citadel are very difficult to replicate for individual traders. There are a number of lessons that we can take up from these genius investors. Number one, quant analysis is unbiased. Working with numbers can help you take more informed and less emotion-driven investment decisions, which can turn out to be profitable. These funds also highlight the importance of a data-driven approach. These guys use historical as well as real-time data to find these complex models and trade based on it and you know, a big profit. And this sort of reiterate the importance of the data-driven approach. The third lesson is that investing is a continuous learning process. We have an abundance of data at our feet. What are the unique and innovative strategies can, that you can find? How does a trending topic impact the stock prices? Can you look at the airline traffic or the maps data to identify stocks to trade? The word is at your fingertips. And the final lesson is that these strategies are extremely difficult to replicate. As an individual trader, somebody with a full-time job, you probably cannot replicate these complex data-driven methods. And that is where companies like Right Research come in. We use quant methods to create these investment strategies for you, which are easily available in various channels like small cases or PMS that you can leverage to add the edge of quant investing to your portfolio. Investment and securities market are subject to market risks. Read all the related documents carefully before investing. Don't forget 